Hello everyone, I'm Chinese Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in a second episode of Qing China and Kaiserreich. So, last time we read a whole bunch of lore and text, so I have a slightly better idea of what's going on. However, from my knowledge, my very, very limited knowledge, right now what we're going to do is begin planning for war. This is a strategy game, and if you're playing in China, you're probably going to end up in war. So, my goal is to produce as many infantry divisions as possible. I don't know what the war will look like, but I want to make sure that we at least have a relatively okay defense going forward. That means getting more support equipment, making more guns, artillery, and stuff like that. But we just had our first few elections. So, our decision to support the un- Qing government has been met with great support and approval from the population. In response, Marshal Wu has persuaded Assembly President Cao Kun to declare a national election to capitalize on her new support. Theoretically, all literate men in China are eligible to participate, but local warlords, widespread chaos in the League, and other issue means we've only expect results from areas under our direct control. Previous elections have seen razor-thin margins. And while the body is largely powerless, a buffer in the number of seats under our control will bolster our legitimacy in the long run. Schedule the elections. Now, let's move on to... Ooh, Future of the Zili Clique. Deepening Leadership Crisis. Lessons of Intervention. Ooh, I like that. 42 days. Or we could do Default on Debt, which doesn't look very good whatsoever. We could Nationalize, Salvage German Designs. Popularity of Authoritarian Democrat. I like that. I like to encourage Baoding Zili cooperation. Stability. Daily political power gain. And that. What is worse? Fractured Empire. Or Deepening Leadership Crisis. Fractured Empire isn't very good. But it's not the worst thing. Overwhelming National Debt. It's not the worst thing either. Deepening Leadership Crisis is not good. It could be worse. All of these are like bad, but they're not, like, just extremely crippling. Maybe altogether it's crippling, but, you know, whatever. What we'll do here, though... Let's see... If we choose the future of the Zili clique, that could influence how we build up our military. Oh! Political commissars. Ooh! I don't want to default on debt for now. That doesn't seem very good. Lessons of the, Lessons of the intervention... And we might as well remove deepening leadership crisis for 42 days. The upheaval of the last few months have shown that the Zili clique must reform itself if it is to survive the next few years, let alone the next few decades. We need to create a reasonably meritocratic promotion system in our military and eliminate some of the most egregious corruption from our government, or we will fade into obscurity. Cool. So, build, 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 build. I have had someone... Oh, there goes them, actually... You don't like me, but you guys really don't like me, so I'm going to send volunteers to you, if I can. Now, I sent volunteers before, but I basically had to, to destroy them when I got them back, because things didn't make any sense. Blah, 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 blah. So, uh, I'm going to try it again, but hopefully these guys don't die on the way over there, or get there, the war ends, and we don't have a good time. My goodness, they're all politically connected. I hate politically connected people. At least in game. Um... Entrenchment speed sounds pretty good. Ah, uh, do him, why not? Who cares? So, I'm doing this to get more army XP. However, I had someone comment yesterday that I should play as a left KMT. Not a bad idea. In time, I probably will. Oh, Wang Jing Wei? Yeah, Wang Jing Wei. He, second NRA. National Rifle Association? What? But, um, he's like the, the fascist leader in vanilla China. What for vanilla Ch uh, China? KMT and Indian so Socialists overthrow Tibet? Wait, KMT? You're over here. Tibet? Oh! The Sixth Panchen Lama. Social Democrat, but they're using a flag like that? I have the big confusion. Oh, that's a lot of lore text. I'll let you guys read about him if you really want to. There you go. I'm not going to read it right now. That's just... That's too much, man. So actually, we could get a little bit more air XP if we really wanted to. Let's see. Oh, we could send a few planes. Very nice. 
Very good. And this is these are the planes that I set up the last time. So so once we play as uh, KMT, maybe in time I will. Sounds like fun. Really sounds like fun. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. And are we getting any XP from this? No one's really having war. The Lindenberg of the East. A young pilot named Song Tonggang has earned great renown for flying across Eurasia in his custom-built self-aircraft. With the recent upheavals within the League, he has volunteered to serve our nation as a pilot destroying our enemies from the skies. Originally based in Nanjing, he has fled the chaos currently enveloping the city for our territory in a small plane and get more political power. And you know what? Let's see if we can kill him off as fast as possible. You are fighters and you're tactical bombers. More max speed, more air attack, more agility? Sure. Electronic mechanical engineering? Very good. Get some more research speed. That would be great. And no one is fighting. I send you my planes, but no one is doing anything. Guys, come on, man. Please. Do something. Oh, the game is lagging very hard. So what's going on? 1.34 political power a day isn't terrible. Black Monday, of course. If I could go to partial mobilization, that would be great, but it costs 200 political power. There we go. Um, Air Force, Navy, that doesn't really matter too much. I can't manually remove ministers. I really don't like that. Oh, I can't remove ministers. Well, I guess there's less things for me to use my political power on then. Could be worse, I suppose. Could be worse. Let's see. You guys, you get reinforcements as soon as possible. Be under the leadership of Wu Pai Fu, who is a, a definite guy around here. Um, you know, just in case, just, just gonna sit there on the line. Just sit there. Actually, if I could deploy these soldiers immediately first, and then see what they're gonna be used for. Oh, there's... Hello. I don't remember reading an event like you. But, okay, the Soviets are here. Nothing's happening, which is really disappointing, to be honest with you. You know what? I want these divisions out now. So I can train even more. Just train them, and I can do this. I will throw you over here and just train. It's fine with me. We need the army XP anyways. Yeah, we don't... We'll reduce the number of guns we have, but I don't really care. Pius the Twelfth elected as a new pope. Good luck, your holiness. We'll see what happens with him. Um, and there goes the Russian Republic going against the Soviet Union. In almost all these Kaiserite games, I almost always see the Soviets get crushed. Oh, wait, Kornilov. Oh, you're a republic, but you've elected... Kornilov. Oh boy. Oh, you're out of manpower. The Soviets have a little bit under Bukharin. Bukharin. Oh, the game is lagging kind of hard. Holy cow. I don't know. I don't even have anything really in the background either. Um, yeah. That's not bueno. Let's see. Continue army reforms. Well, I definitely want to do that. Please crack down. More stability. Is it worth 100 political power getting more stability right now? There's not much I can do with my political power, except... I could go early mobilization. Famine breaks out in Sichuan. Alright, well, you know what? If this will help us produce factories faster and get us more fuel... So be it. That's fine with me for now. So be it. We, we barely have any factories to use, but at least we get more fuel. You know. And it's more of a stepping stone than in vanilla. Okay, they could run left Kuang Tang. Alright. So at least the next step will only be 100 political power as well, so that's not too bad. Whatever. I'm disappointed, though, that nothing's really happening. Can you guys kill each other, please? I would greatly appreciate it. Please kill each other. Sijuan, I'm sure you're going to ask me for some help since you're now starving. Wow, compared to the first episode so far, there's been almost like no, you know, text to read. Oh my goodness, we definitely need more goods. Um, reduce that by one. That'd be fine with me. I'm kind of okay with that. Soviets. Ah, the future of the clique. The clique, the Zili clique, like every other warlord clique in China, operates primarily on the basis of seniority and on mentor-mentee relationships. While this usually provides, uh, you know, some sort of stability and helps reduce the probability for backstabbing, it also stifles meritocracy and promotions based on skill. With the recent deaths and advancing age of many senior generals, however, we may be forced to take drastic action and promote younger officers to the forefront of our military. Four candidates have emerged for elevation to the full general corps. Guo Jijua, Wang Lingyun, Du Xinjun, and Wei Yisan. Oh, cool. 
And now we get a defensive plan for China following Yu Paifu's call for a meeting with, of senior Zili generals. A large number have arrived in Luoyang, leaving their subordinates in charge of frontline duties. The first pressing concern is picking a centralized defense strategy for the inevitable war with Japan and the Fangxing government. The northern traders' growing boldness in the wake of the league's collapse has alarmed many senior commanders, including Zhang Bali and Liu Menggang. The two men have spent the last few weeks codifying plans they have been developing over the last two years and have presented them to the assembled Zili commanders. Zhang fo focuses on large-scale defensive fortifications, moving industry to the interior of Japan, and rousing the fighting spirit of China in order to defeat Japan. So a long, long war, basically. While not a direct opposite of Zhang's playing, Liu's plan focuses more on improving the fighting capability of Zili troops. Improved morale, drill standards, and logistical support are key, at least in his eyes of ensuring China's victory. Updated medical care also plays a crucial part of the strategy. Both are compelling plans, but it's up to Wu Paifu to ultimately decide. Now, before we do anything rash, we gotta see what we're doing. Do we do main gangs? And we get civilian factories, we get military factories, and more attack and defense on core territory, which sounds really good in my idea, or my, my head. Or we do Zhang Bali's plan, where we get two civilian factories like this. We get three military factories over here, and then modernize armament contracts. We get four military factories and less political power. Political power really doesn't seem like it has too much of a problem for us right now. Even though we could lower, like, export focus maybe eventually in time. We could also go to partial mobilization, raise conscription levels, and get some stuff here, but... Political power doesn't really seem to do very much for us. I love the attack and defense on core territory, however, in time that'll be more and more useless. But I want to play it safe for now. I don't know what the future holds, so let's go with Liu Mengang's plan. See what happens. 21 days. Let us... Oh, we could go down that way more quickly. War support is okay. Default on debt. I'll do that later. We don't... It doesn't seem like we really need that now. So, we will improve railroads. Oh, 60 days. Steal. Rebuild our alliance. Um, let's go with the plan, just to get factories. So, General Liu Mengang's plan focuses on improving logistics and support networks for our troops, so they can better be able to fight. The trade-off for this, however, is less industrial capacity dedicated to building defensive fortifications. Well, I love defensive fortifications, but sometimes you just need more men in the field, and men with guns. Cool. And we currently get about 1.34 political power a day. I'll probably do Please Crack Down next. No longer gets popular support for Wu Paifu. Alright, so be it. This will be removed soon enough, which is good, because it's costing us quite a bit of stuff. Intervention, the LEP collapse. That's good. Ooh. Ooh. Zhang Kewu takes control of Sichuan. Grave news, sire. It appears that Zhang Kewu has defeated our ally Yang Sen in Sichuan. While this is a major loss to the Zili clique, the province is industrially poor and militarily overstretched. Should they join any opposing faction, we will crush them. Gosh dang it. If anything, uh, I don't trust these guys, so... Even though they actually kind of like us a little bit. Or no, we like them just a tiny bit. Uh, don't hate us. They have a major fan famine, so... Yeah, just don't hate us and we'll be okay with each other. You guys are in the north, of course. Wang, do you have anything? Oh! You know what? Just in case, I'm going to get uh, an ambusher. I just don't know how the situation is going to develop. Um, they're fighting in the south and I want action right now. Are they attacking or... Ooh, basic machine tools. Very good, very good. Um, Max factories in a state. Just go with disperse. It's fine with me. It doesn't really matter. If I leave, will they attack us? No, they won't, which is good. If anything, I don't have range to get down there for everyone, but we'll do what we can. And we start getting a little bit of air XP. Very nice. Just just barely, though. Just, just barely. Keep making more divisions, guys. Oh my gosh, we need so many guns and stuff like that. Keep doing that. That'll be good. We're going to need a lot of support equipment. Very good, very good. Get down there. Ah, oh, yes, we are. Wow, that's fast. We actually got down there. We must have been on strategic redeployment, which is fine with me. Just get me involved in these battles. Election results, victory! Results are in for the parties of China still able to hold enough 
Elections, stable enough. Turnout was, as expected, quite low, naturally. But in cities like Beijing, we received record numbers of votes from intellectuals, reformers, and other previously opposed to our rule. It appears that the intervention, while robbing us of German support, has given us a large degree of political legitimacy and support. In the aftermath of our victory, President Kalkun announced he was stepping down to be replaced by Yan Hui Qing. It's unclear how much of an influence Wu Paifu had on this decision, but it's clear that the Jade Marshal did not want any of Kao's drunken antics impacting the new government. We get political power, we get more authoritarian Democrat support, and we get the guy gives us exactly... Hello, Pu Yi. Eleven more thingamabobs. Uh, political power, not thingamabobs. Political power. Uh, let's go ahead and do please correct down. It does hurt our output right now, and dockyard output, and daily political power costs, but it's worth it for more stability. Alright, good. Let's get expand the Shangzi coal fields. Seize from Yan Zishan. At the end of the last Zaifeng War, the coal fields of Shangzi are some of the most prosperous in China. We should invest in these coal fields in order to fuel our growing industry. This may provoke Yang, though, so we must, you know, tread with caution. Tread with caution is always a good thing to do. Oh my goodness, a lag in my. Uh, that's that's probably the biggest thing about me and Kaiser. Every time I play Kaiser, no matter what happens, I always comment on the lag. I love this mod so much, but. The lag is sometimes a little bit too much. But right now it's okay. It's okay for the most part. But, you know, I'm rocking not a terrible processor. It's, you know, Ryzen 7, I think. I'm pretty sure I'm rocking a Ryzen 7 1700X, I believe. Something like that. Cool. But, you know, not the best CPU, but whatever. Uh, support equipment. Oh, we need more. We need more support equipment. We need more basic infantry equipment as well. I'm not going to give up my artillery, though. And we're only building civilian factories, so that's why I want to go down this path to get more civilian factories. But ultimately, three more military factories down here. This side does give you seven, but the attack defense on core territory, that's pretty important. Because we have core territory, or at least clams everywhere. And at the very least, I want to be able to at least hold my core territory. Because Japan, they're going to come knocking. They're going to come knocking eventually, and I don't want to deal with that. Good. Give me all that. New offices in Beijing Liaison Council. The Anqing clique has emerged victorious with our support. We recently installed the Beijing Liaison Council as our official representative organization in the new Anqing capital of Nanjing. They will be working towards achieving eventual unification, however. They've now requested that in order to make a statement and show the glory of the emperor to the Chinese commoners in Nanjing, we should fund the construction of very large offices for them. Increase Qing influence by 1%. Yes, we want to increase our influence. We want to unify China. It'll cost us some thingies, but, you know, whatever. Thingies get... Every thingy has a cost, basically. Uh, Siam's new constitution. Getting with the times, it seems. German East Asia. Yunnan. This is a little bit larger than normal. Vanilla Yunnan. Construction. Very good. Very, very good. Artillery would be nice. But... Hmm, oh, go... Oh, we need to... Just get better guns. That's gonna be important. Mongolia is still a menace. They actually have... West Mongolia as a demilitarized zone. And Hami? Hami? Like Hami. Oh, you're a puppet. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, there's so many Chinas here, man. So many Chinas. I don't even know what's going on. Oh, yeah. Keep keep doing that. That's good. Good, good, good. Just keep keep us getting attacked. That's good. Oh, wait. That's not... Tibet? Are you in a faction with each other? No. There's no factions around here, which is fine. Entente, Reichspact. My hope is that Japan goes to war with the Reichspact as well as Entente sometime. I really hope that happens. Come on. Keep doing it down there. Come on. You guys are still okay. You really don't have the range to get down here. Don't like it. But at least the enemies don't have that many planes. You know what? Do that. Get a 10% efficiency boost to 15 planes doing whatever. Any attacks? No. God dang it, guys. Come on. Any other wars I can send soldiers? The Russian-Soviet War. You know, I'll help out the Russians if possible. I can send three more. Yeah, let's do that. This might give us some generals that have more XP, too. Ooh, Wang Ling Yung. Nice. Awesome. I want to send you some volunteers as well. You know it's serious when Qing China starts sending volunteers to the world. As long as we don't get attacked, I'm okay. Make sure we don't get it killed off. You guys are okay. I've stopped army exercises to a degree for some places. You guys are okay. I don't want to hurt my production of goods, though. That's kind of my deal. And if I can send, you know, divisions away to get army XP instead, 
That's not bad then. That's really not bad. Alright, so we've stopped 8.51. Fighting the Soviets should be okay getting us a little bit more army XP. We don't get that much anyways at the current moment. Chief of the Air Force. Wu Pai Fu. More supply consumption actually it really sucks. Chief of Staff. School of Defense. I like the entrenchment, but everything else is kind of like okay. I like Azin Gyoro. Is Jai Jing. However you pronounce that. Uh, that's not bad either. I want the one with daily, more daily army XP. Is that anywhere here? Of course not. Government. Daily political power. More decryption. I can't change these guys out, which sucks. Um. Yeah, I don't think there's really much I can do. Oh, maybe if I change this guy. Less polit political power, less division attack. But I want Li Jai Chen. So you get 0.1 daily political power. That's not bad. I really don't mind switching to him. So we'll, we'll switch to him next. You guys be high. Uh, you guys come over here. Fortress Buster. That's okay. Be under new field marshal if we can. Sure, it looks good enough to me. Oh, oh, he's a logistics wizard. Oh, yeah. And that. Yeah, give me that. I'm not sure where the attacks are starting. Or where we will get attacked. I don't know where to throw you. Just, like, throw you over there or something. Good. Oh, oh, what's this? Phase one? I can get field hospitals. Implementing his entire plan. Oh, no. If not completed, we lose stuff. But if we implement it, we get stuff. Infrastructure? Oh, that costs... Oh, no. I wanted the daily army XP, but whatever. Uh... Expanding Baoding Arsenal. The Baoding Arsenal attached to the military academy is somewhat less developed than the Gong Xiang Foundry. Yet with enough investments, we can turn it into one of China's main military manufacturers. Its proximity to the academy is also a plus, as it allows us to test new equipment designs both practically and theoretically. <gasps> Another division! Yay! You know what? I like the bonuses here. They're not great. But they're not bad. And even though I would like to do... Oh, we're already doing police crackdown. Go ahead and do the railroads. Actually, the railroads seem to be okay. Because if we expand our railroads, we could get more resources. And that's always pretty key to what we need. Mostly more steel, but whatever. International avant-garde. Interesting. How are these guys doing? Where are these boys? They're just kind of moving in at the current moment. Hmm. So we are basically there. The Russians like attacking, which is fine with me. Oh, and we're still getting attacked down there. That's good. We don't get that much army XP, but I'll do whatever I can to get more. And no longer. Oh, good. We no longer get the effects of Black Monday. So we have five military factories at the moment. That's good. Don't want to attack unless we're going to be very successful. They don't even have full infrastructure yet. Or organization, I mean. Oh, actually, if you guys help attack here, you could probably win. Yeah, hop off for now. We're only going to attack in good, coordinated places. Good. Not looking too bad, not looking too bad. Oz is down here. Still getting attacked. Very nice. Very good. Actually, these planes... Oh! Rich Vein discovered following a recent report on or focus on mining in the Shanxi region, we've uncovered vast deposits of mineral wealth. It is truly fortuitous that we seized this area from the Governor Yang during the last Zi Fang War. Our engineers have discovered a new vein full of coal and iron ore. The only problem, though, is that it extends underground into Yan's territory. While we could mine this, Yan's engineers will no doubt notice the incursion. Ever since the league's collapse, Yan has drawn closer and closer, closer to Zhang Zhu Lin and Feng Xing. Feng Chen, who was formerly allied with Wu. Uh, Wu's advisors are warning him that this could very well escalate tensions between us and the Feng Chen government. Just dig deep and greedy. Honestly, <laughs> oh, I love Victoria too. But this is too risky just because at the current moment we don't need more steel. We really don't. So we can hold off on the steel production. That's okay with me. Are you guys actually going to win here? Oh, no, I'm going to have all of you guys attack right here. That'll be good. 11. Poland likes a new king. Very nice. 
Oh, let's go ahead and do another one of these. Engineer Company 2, that's okay with me, because I will probably actually do that. Good, good, good. There we go. What if you just attacked here immediately? Gonna do that. Oh, maybe not. Maybe so. Maybe not. Yes, no, maybe so. You know what? Don't do that. As much as I want as much army XP, I gotta keep an eye on this stuff. We're out of guns, and we're out of support equipment, which is really not good. Nice, keep attacking us, keep attacking us. Kai Cheng Zun. Well, I hope you're learning something, man. Well, you are a commando, ranger, infantry leader. That's good. Oh, he even has a little bit of lore. He was born 1871. He has a military career and important notes. Once built a residence in an ancestral hall in Tianjin and engaged in real estate, industrial investment, and charity during his dismissal. Oh, they actually have a personality. Huh. Actually, how many days until we get rid of this deficit? Oh, uh, a little over two years. That's not good. That's really not good. You guys, if you can... Begin attacking there as well. Rakani to... Wait, Kumul? Oh! This, oh, we were over here earlier. Who are you? Revolutionaries take over Mongolia. Z Xinjiang clique erupts in war. I like your hat. Yubalers Khan, Mongolia under Solin Danzan, Chen Chaoyong, model governor. Governor of Anqing has consolidated his rule after his victory over the Nanjing clique in the League collapsed, and while he is technically part of our government, the province enjoys a large degree of autonomy. After the League war concluded, some Zili generals insisted on directly integrating the province into our government, but this was largely rejected due to the fragility of our own regime. It seems now that keeping Chen's autonomy was the right move. He has just announced a massive reform project for the province, promising major industrial and legal reforms. The news was greeted with enthusiasm from many business leaders in our territory as following the German military mission's withdrawal, they have sought new markets to trade with. Good, more stability, and Ireland joins the Reichs Pact. Okay, well, well, whatever. 15 army XP, not much to talk about, but it's, I still prefer that over anything else. Good, give me that XP. That's good, 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 because I want to remove these terrible buffs, debuffs, so badly. Um, go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah, continue army reform. Effects remove, we get 10% more attack and defense, even though we're at negative 40 right now. That is not bueno. Alright, level 3 defense. I'm glad he's getting higher and higher defense statistics. Oh, Socialist Italiano wins election. Okay, cool. Just because we're going to need a lot of defense. Holy cow, we're going to need a ton of defense. We're doing better on guns. Jabal Shamar, we're doing better on support equipment. I mean, I guess I could send volunteers, but... I don't want to get involved in that. That seems a little bit too unfun. What's going on around here? Expand Baoding Arsenal. Very good. Political com Commissars? I could do that now, but I don't really need to do it yet since we're not in the middle of a war, so I'll wait on that. Roads. Default on debt. It's better to do this now than later, or we go with on our own. Army XP. Out of supply and less supply consumption. Not bad. Reorganize warlord divisions. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Hire former Republican officers. Bonus for land auction. Salvage German designs. More factories. These are all okay. I want to get more of that army XP, though. Factories. Uh, all these focuses, they're not, like, really, really good. Uh, we could do this, though. Lessons of the Intervention. But that doesn't get us anywhere. Let's just go into default on debt. All other options have failed. The withdrawal of German financial support means a full-scale international default on our debt is the only option to solve our financial crisis. It will certainly harm us in the short term, but with any luck, this will pay off in the long term, which we lose consumer goods factories and daily political power for a year. Could be much, much worse. But do that for now. Oh, God, I hate militia divisions. They're just a waste of manpower and stats and equipment. Ugh. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to short the line. If possible. Actually, this might not be a good thing. This might not be a bad thing. If they keep attacking here, having two divisions defend, not bad, but... Uh, just stay up there for now. Uh-oh. Belgian in de Declaration of Independence. Good luck, Belgium. East Turkestan declared war on the clique. 
German East Asia. The world's on fire. Well, we don't like either one of you, really. Who's gonna win? Indochina declares independence. Let's say East Turkestan is probably gonna lose. I could. Can I send the volunteers? I could send the volunteers. You're fighting two countries at once, though. You guys. Oh, they're out of manpower, though. You know what? Give me more divisions. I don't want to send these guys. Because that wastes manpower and equipment. But I'll do it anyways. I don't care. Let's try it. Here are some crappy divisions. If they die, I won't feel bad. Good. How are you guys doing? Are you attacking two divisions? Good. Keep attacking then. Help them out. Belgium joint... Okay, they declared their independence and immediately went back to the Reich's Pact. Very good, very good. Keep doing this, keep going, keep going. Got 20 army XP, that's nice. It's very nice. Immediately attack this way. How's this going down here? Pretty good, pretty good. Over here, Turkestan will probably help defeat this little area and then help defend the line. Supply is probably going to be absolute trash. Good. Divisions up there, so you're actually ready to defend, to attack, whatever needs to get done. Good. I hope you get a little bit more moved to where you need to be, get some planning done, good stuff like that. Good enough. Computing machine. Radar. And... Better guns. It's probably a bad idea to switch production lines right now. But we'll see what happens if I do that. Still 1936, how much has really gone on? Oh, I didn't do a land doctrine. Um, I forgot about that. Mass assault's always fun, but I I want to play it safe, this campaign. I have to play it safe. Just do that. Screw it. Do it. Ah, good. And Turkestan, hello. Put you right here with the bad supply. Take those guys out. That would be great. We're getting attacked down there. We're getting a... We're attacking, oh, over here, which is not bad. You all attacked here, you could probably win. It's only one militia division. So, but that's pretty much all the time that we have for today, my friends. Hope you enjoy this episode. Um, There's definitely a lot less reading. And we've started to think about the very short and very long-term future of China. But anyways, hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you did, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you all tomorrow as... We ourselves might end up in warp. I don't know. But anyways, thanks for watching, and have a great day.